Hey guys, Ryan with Cycle News. Welcome to another first ride video. We're, today we're on the 2023 KTM 300SX. Yes, this is the fuel injected, electric start, big bore, two stroke, motocross specific bike that you've been waiting for. I know a lot of guys have been building these before. So now it's a specific 300 motocross bike. We did get to ride this thing at Red Bud a few months ago. Um, we only got a few laps on the motocross bike. And then a few months after that, I did race the Ironman GNCC on the 300 XC. So very similar engine, but the um, cross country or off-road specific platform, uh, the tuning or the mapping is specific for that, as well as the suspension. So first time riding it uh, in our local track, we're here at Glen Helen. This is basically big bore heaven. So really fun to get this thing out on the track and see what it's all about. Start with the motor. So fuel injected to me, that's super cool. If you're gonna ever ride with your buddies anywhere in the mountains or go anywhere that's not, you know, your local motocross track, um, you don't have to worry about the tuning of it, no jetting, nothing like that. And you might say, oh, well, it was TPI or whatever, but now it's throttle body injected, so TBI instead of TPI. So we're back to mixing gas. They recommend 60 to one with this thing today. So um, pretty cool though. I'm fine with mixing gas. Um, don't have to worry about any lag or bog of like a normal two stroke. Another thing that's really cool, there's two maps. So map one is uh, like the mellow map. Map two is the more aggressive map. The differences are in map one, the power valve opens up to 80% when it's all the way wide open. And then in map two, the power valve opens up to 100% when it's wide open. So I did try both maps. I preferred map one, just made it a little more mellow, like kind of a four stroke ish. You don't have to clutch it as much as you would think. Um, that like as a normal 125 or 250, it's, it actually rolls on really good. And then it carries really long. That's what I was really pumped about is that you don't have to shift as much as I thought. No matter on 125 or 250, you're blah, 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 up and down. You can really carry gears two and three a lot longer than I anticipated. So that was really cool, especially up the big hills at Glen Helen. The bike feels light. I think for guys who are riding a 450, this thing is a lot lighter than that. So it kind of dances around a little more, but in the same sense, you're not fighting the bike as much. It's really free flowing and dances around getting those ruts. Um, it's still pretty stable and, and comfortable to ride, especially the new chassis for the KTM. All the bikes are now riding with the same uh, frame, I believe. So that part is really comfortable and the fork and shock are getting just better and better. I'm always impressed riding the air fork, especially if you haven't ridden one in a while. Uh, the bottoming resistance is getting better and that riding through these braking bumps, it dances around and hops through the bumps a lot easier and lighter than you would anticipate. And also the fork and shock have the tool list adjuster. So it's the plastic dials. You can adjust compression for the fork. I just went out two on the compression to get the fork to, to go into the stroke a little more. Just in the one section coming down the hill here, I was getting it, it was just feeling vague and kind of standing up. So that kind of opened it up, got it to work a little bit better and, and my problems were solved. As far as handling goes, I think the cockpit is a lot uh, better than it has been in the past. The seat is actually grippy without being too, um, you know, not too invasive. It's comfortable to sit on. The whole peg seat rider triangle area is really comfortable. The pegs are better than they have been in, in the past as well. It's that same platform that the 450 and the 250 SXF have been on that's, that's really rider friendly. And then on top of that, you know, you put the lightweight two stroke engine inside of it and it just is super comfortable to ride. You can move around on it. As long as this bike has the ease of use of a normal two stroke and the maintenance wise, um, then I think this is gonna be a go-to for a lot of racers. If you can race this bike in the 450 class, I'm not sure about AMA rules, so don't quote me on this, but if you can race this bike in a 450 class or an open class, I think this thing is gonna be really fun. It's easy to ride, it's super fast, um, and it's not gonna require maybe the amount of maintenance that a four stroke 450 would. I think that's a lot of thing. One thing that a lot of guys are pushing for these days is like bringing back a 252 stroke because it's so easy to work on. You throw a piston, you do a top end, it's super simple. I think riding a two stroke is just fun. I think it's more fun than riding a four stroke. You're just working it more, you're revving the bike, you're railing outsides. I think that's just why that you probably everyone watching this started riding on a two stroke. I mean, maybe the new kids, they're all riding four strokes to start on, but even an 85, a 65, you're riding two strokes. So when you get on a big two stroke, I guess, it's just fun, man. You can't help but smile. You're going up the hill, you're clutching it, just letting it eat up going up that hill, man. It's so fun. And I think that is a really like a big thing that people riding moto in general is just like riding a two stroke. It's so fun. The electric start makes it super easy. Um, the fuel injection makes it super easy. KTM said this is one of the most popular bikes of the year. So I actually named it as my bike of the year, the XC model. And now getting to ride this thing, I'm just super pumped on this bike. And I think if I could have one bike, this would probably be the do everything bike I would buy.
Thank you guys for watching. As always, we're going to have a full write-up in the Cycle News Magazine where you can catch that every Monday night at cyclenews.com. Be sure to like, follow, and subscribe. Check us out on all your favorite social media channels. We'll catch you guys next time.